Thanks very much, Warwick, and thanks for the opportunity to talk today. Yes, it is a rather long topic, and I'm not going to even try and repeat it myself. Um, Mars and Jacob, we do a lot of work on water markets, but today I'd like to talk to you about one project in particular that we're doing, which is an innovation project, and we're in a proof of concept stage in the project, and it's called Waterflow. And in essence, what we're doing with this project is trying to aggregate a range of water market information sources to make it easier for a market participant to get to the point of trade. So we undertook a challenge project late last year or over the course of last year and we did a number of interviews across the spectrum of the market and the market has a lot of players in it. That's actually good in our opinion, that's healthy. There's growers in it, there's analysts, there's investors and the like. What came out of that that was quite interesting for us was that to make an informed water market decision, you're looking at a lot of different information sources. We've already spoke, spoken about carryover, but a lot of people don't even know how carryover works and what the rules are out there. They're still grappling with those concepts at a grassroots level. They want to know about market depth. They want to know about prices. They want to know about storage levels, usage, announced allocation. What does the climate outlook look like? What are the trade rules? If I want to buy in this area, what rules am I going to face? Are the rules favourable to what I'm trying to do or are they going to run against what I'm trying to do? What are the trade limits? And that's just on the supply side of the equation, let alone what's happening with water demand. That's a lot of information across a lot of websites and good luck trying to find it if you're only doing this once or twice a year. Um, there are people out there who are actually very sophisticated, I have to say, and who are actively doing this sort of research. But the feedback we got consistently was it does take a couple of hours to do this sort of work if you want to do it and you want to enter the arrangement well informed. There are also issues of trust and independence in the market with a number of parties who came to us and said, look, we don't really know where to turn to for an independent take on information and what's on the market and where the price should be and how do we make a decision at this point in time as to what we should be doing now, let alone in three months, let alone in six months' time. So we basically went, actually, we can do something about that. It's actually possible through IT solutions to aggregate this information into one point. Now, we're not building a trading engine here. We're building an information aggregation site. And we're about five months into this project, and I've got a colleague in the room, Simo Turvenen, who's been working very hard on this with me as well, so thank you, Timo, Simo, for your help with this. But this is an 18-month project. We're five months in, and it's been a pretty exciting journey thus far, and what I'd like to do now is just briefly talk about where we're up to, because we're at the point where, within the next few weeks, we're going to be going out for market testing on aspects of this. We've really focused thus far on price transparency, because that's a key aspect of this, but there are a number of things that we're also going to be developing as part of the platform. We're going to be helping put together and aggregate information on the knowledge base on water markets. So there'll be what we, in highfalutin terms, call a water university. There's also the ability for notifications to fall within the applications, and it's going to sit on a mobile and a website application as well. And the key to the mobile is that Everyone we spoke to basically said they're using an iPhone or a Samsung or an Android device out there in the field and that's how they're digesting information and with a GPS controlled uh, device that they're out in the field, they're not steering, it's doing the steering for them. And so they basically can be consuming information out there via their device and they said make sure it works on mobile but equally make sure it works well on mobile because we don't have a lot of bandwidth out here. And so that's a key challenge that we've got to work through as part of this project. How do we make these things work in areas where there isn't actually a lot of data available? So we've been working hard on it. What's under the hood? And I'm going to give you a quick demo of it after this. We've got zones, we've got limits, we've got rules. You've got to have that in this. We're importing trade history from the BOM automatically. Uh, that was a nice little development and thanks to the BOM for the work that they've done in this area and their assistance. Um, we're doing some cleaning of that data. Some of that is happening now automatically and we're also doing manual cleaning over the top of that. We've got storage levels automatically coming in. We've got allocations automatically coming in. We've got pricing coming in. 
And for the purpose of the proof of concept, we've spoken a number of, with a number of intermediaries and some of them have agreed that we can actually scrape their sites for information and start drawing that in so we can see what that would show in terms of listings. What does that enable us to do? Well, it enables us to do this. This is the first draft of the website. It's a pre-beta version, so it doesn't look as pretty as we'd like it to look with time, but we can log in, we can say where we are in the southern Murray-Darling Basin. At the moment, I'm in Victoria, Murray below Choke. I can then jump in and start doing a search. How much do I want in terms of water? I could look at temporary or permanent. For the sake of this, we're going to look at temporary. 100 megalitres, hit search. What does that tell me? It tells me that I can board it by water from a number of different locations. Now, this is already really useful information because a number of people that we've spoken to have been very blinkered and haven't been able to go, where do we get water from? Actually, we're saying well, there might be several locations. But also we've got trade limits that we're hoping that we had got in there and the like. And then you can drill another layer in and you can start looking at, well, here's the bomb data. This is what prices have been doing. And you can interrogate that over different time frames. What are the storage levels looking like? And what are the announced allocations looking like? This is what we're talking about in terms of aggregating information into one spot so that you're not going to the state water register, you're not going to the bomb, you're not going to um, various places. But equally, we can start showing as well what's happening in the market. Well, there are actually options in the market, volumes that match with your search criteria, and these are the sort of prices that we're seeing. Ultimately, this will then connect through to those sites so that the user, rather than transacting on our site, we were going, we we're going to remain independent in the market, will actually be able to click through to the broker or exchange where they might be looking to do a transaction and do that transaction. Hopefully what we've done in doing this, though, is that we've reduced their search time. They can come to this site, they can see where things are at. Now, we're going to be adding more information to this. Already we're working on a number of things in the background in terms of understanding what the outlooks are, because that was some of the feedback we got. People want to know what's the state government saying about the likely allocation outlook, because that's a key consideration in my planning. What's the bomb saying in terms of climatic outlook? Because that's also a key consideration in my planning. So there's a range of things that we're building into this. This is just a first version and an early test version. Um, but look, it's been a pleasure to have the opportunity to show it to you today. And hopefully there's some good questions on what's possible. Because I think aggregating information in the market can only help people who are trying to make a decision as to whether they buy, whether they sell, or whether they do nothing at this point in time and wait for a point in the time in the future when it's the right time for them to transact. Thank you very much and um, I look forward to the questions.